Good morning and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Rashmita and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru, India. This session will run over the next 60 minutes, including Q&A. The session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel. I will share the link to our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. Before we begin, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together, so please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. Also, please keep your mics muted during the session. I would now like to welcome Shivam, our speaker for today's session. Shivam is an author, cloud architect, speaker and co-founder at TechScalable. He is passionate about technology and works on Azure, GCP, machine learning and blockchain. He is also a Microsoft certified trainer. But for now, I will hand over to Shivam to begin the session. Over to you, Shivam. Thank you, Rashmita. I will share my screen. Okay, so welcome everyone. Let's get started. And today we have another one of our fun sessions where where we will be discussing about uh, the data science, machine learning, and AI for space exploration. And uh, so this this is I think the third third session which we are having in this series where we discuss about any either any mission of NASA uh, or any uh, or any uh, particular industry or domain which is focused on space as such. And we use Azure Azure machine learning services or machine learning itself uh, for exploration of these things as such. So a very warm welcome to all of you. And let me quickly take you to the agenda which I have over here to the to the meetup page and you will see that on the meetup page we basically have uh, also put the the learning link so today's session is something which uh, you can even get your kids interested into like uh, microsoft on this uh, link they basically have created parallel lines or have drawn parallels between the the seriousness of machine learning and then how can we make somebody interested into machine learning uh, any even any young young uh, or any kid as well interested into machine learning by compare comparing the the concept so basically if you see it over here so there was a there is a uh, animated uh, movie in on netflix called as over the moon so whatever we will be discussing it is also compared with that or the scenes from that particular uh, movie is picked up and then that is compared to you can say that is also compared with what we will be discussing so even if you want to get your kids interested into machine learning you can definitely uh, do that and if i just open few of the links and i will walk through i'll walk you through this uh, learn module. So this learn module is basically having three path. Uh, you can say learning path over there. Planning a mission, a moon mission using uh, pandas and uh, using Python and pandas. So when you talk about planning a moon mission, we will be trying to understand the, the difficulties or we will be trying to understand the various challenges which which happens and we'll see what data can tell us for that particular uh, to how to solve that particular challenge now one thing which will be uh, which we will see over here is uh, that we will try to do a lot of uh, assumptions because we may not have the full we don't have the full picture of uh, the the missions uh, and just fii i'm pretty sure you are already aware of it the the next nasa mission to moon is called as artemis and Artemis is basically planned for 2024 and now I think it has been pushed by one year 2025. So in next three years. 
the the man will be on the moon again right and this time it's it's uh, it will be more than that we'll also have one female astronaut and uh, a person with color as well on the moon uh, and apart from that they will also be encouraging the industrial partners to uh, uh, and any industry which is uh, which is focusing on space they are also targeting them so artemis is the next mission so in our example as well we will be trying to uh, compare based on the things which happened in past we'll try to compare what we have seen in the past to what may happen in artemis or during the artemis mission and uh, we will try to uh, reason through the data over there so that's that's one thing the capacity planning of artemis is what we will be thinking of now the second thing is meteor shower so we will use python to estimate the meteor shower and we will see that can we understand that let's say you are vis visiting any any city so in uae we have abu dhabi so the example is of abu dhabi here where uh, where we will be trying to find the the latitude on on those latitudes uh, on which day can you estimate that there will be a meteor shower? So that's the second second module here. And the third module is the one where we use AI. Uh, we use custom vision, which is basically over uh, here. Custom vision, Microsoft solution called as custom vision to train one uh, machine learning model for the purpose of identifying the data uh, you can say images over there so this is the third module as part of the learning path over there so the uh, you can find this learning path you can find this learning path on the learn on the uh, meetup page it's also in the chat window and you can follow these three three sections over there just want to show you the the the, the thing which i was trying to describe that you can even make your uh, kids interested into machine learning and data science uh, in this learning path. This is one of the fun session which we are doing. So if I open the correct links over here, you will notice that there was there is a movie animated movie called as Over the Moon. Uh, it was released in 2020 and uh, that's the main character of them of that movie and in that movie the story is that the character basically uh, there is a moon goddess uh, there is a moon goddess and the character uh, makes this spaceship to go to the moon to find the goddess and 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 so and so forth right uh, like this so you can do your research by moving by uh, watching a movie as well so the the difficulty which this uh, which the main character uh, Fefe uh, faces during the launch of the space uh, shuttle, which is inside this uh, this uh, bunny right now, and then uh, she faces a lot of difficulties. Uh, it becomes the 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 overweight. So and then because of the overweight. Uh, the the over the because the weight becomes beyond that threshold the engine loses the thrust so it ha it is it has really happened with nasa before it's not uh, this movie uh, i'm not sure if the, it's inspired by that or not but it has happened with nasa before that because of the weight the one of the uh, out of five i think one of the engine basically uh, was lost the thrust and then the the engine number five uh, pushed the the spacecraft uh, from that beyond that point where it was unable to do that. So it has happened before. Uh, we, we have seen that similar thing has happened in real life when the Apollo 15, 13's engine stopped two minutes early. Just imagine that. And the 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 Apollo 13 crew lost thrust, but the results were sim uh, but the results were similar to what they were in the in this movie. And the thrust to weight ratio wasn't enough to break through the Earth atmosphere. But NASA had thought it through. NASA already had all the plans. Uh, unlike what happens in the animated movie, NASA thought it through that it may happen. And then the rocket, uh, I think I read about it somewhere. Yeah, so the, the fifth engine which was there, it, it pushed uh, that beyond 
the point so it can break through the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, like this, so what they have done is if I, I have noted summarized that the pointers over here. So there are four points which we will be discussing and which are there also in this learning path. Uh, the, the planning of a moon mission, uh, the Artemis mission of NASA 2025, 24, 25 now. And the we will be looking at the rocket, the, the rock sample and rocket weight data. What are the problems uh, as such? And the concept of uh, how do you, how can you predict the meteors, meteor shower, shower in case you visit any city? And then how can you analyze the images? And all these things, three three things also happen in this movie as well. So for example, uh, the the because of the weight, the space, this shuttle, which the main character creates, uh, is unable to go to the moon. So some magical thing happens there, but in real life, uh, NASA was able to overcome that. So here in the second part, uh, when the when the main character finds the moon goddess, there this uh, something happens over there because and the moon goddess uh, sort of uh, sort of become very uh, something happens there, and finally because of that, uh, meteor shower starts starts and then uh, and that's another scene in the movie. So which we practically uh, we will just discuss about the data and if you want to make anyone interested into the data science, you can use that scene of the movie along with the data. And the third part is the image analysis part. So I think we'll just get started with it. And uh, I'll I'll close it and I will just take you back to my VS, uh, VS code over here. So this is the over the moon. OK, now. So a couple of practical things, right? Uh, the the calculations of the weights are very precise. Uh, we calculate every single thing whenever the, any uh, space mission is planned. Uh, the calculations are are taken care, and the rockets which are there are multi-phase rockets. So if I just see if I take and take you back to Artemis mission, so you can find all these links in that uh, in the uh, in the uh, learning module. So I am opening this PDF over here, which will specify about the Artemis uh, uh, mission over here like. Uh, and this is the next mission which they have planned for 2024 and which is now I think in 2025 pushed for one year where the man will be landing on the moon. So they all the details are there like what type of rocket will be there, uh, how many stages will be there in the rocket what which small businesses will be contributing to the success and what are the scientific payloads which it will be taking taking there <coughs> taking to the moon and uh, and all the other details are there in this uh, pdf and let's see if if there is something which i want to show you right now so and then this is not the only thing so artemis is one of the uh, mission and then the uh, the main uh, uh, objective is uh, moon to Mars. So whatever learning or whatever testing or whatever uh, information will be gathered during the Artemis mission to moon in 2025, that same that that knowledge or that testing will be translated or will help in the in NASA's mission to the Mars where they will try to uh, we can say land humans over there, right? This is this is also planned and Artemis is one of the you can say steps over there maybe right now we there is a particular space launch system as SLS. So uh, the various type of rockets are there, but uh, generally there is a three phase booster. There is a three phase system. So the the first. Uh, uh, you can say the the first rocket basically get the, ro uh, the get the space shuttle till 60 kilometers. The second rocket, uh, the second phase rocket, it takes the spacecraft to the orbit, and the third uh, rocket which is there, the third phase which is there, that takes the the space shuttle to the uh, to the destination to the moon over there. So, so. It's very important that we have specific calculations of the weight where if anything is slightly overweight. So for example, the food which uh, the food, air uh, and the payload which the uh, which the astronauts are, are or the which what the shuttle is is carrying that cannot be 
beyond one uh, particular point because it will not launch uh, that system in the or it will not it will not work out basically and the thrust thrust will not be there so everything is calculated very well and a very important thing is because of the scientific uh, the what the one of the reason or one of the good things which have happened is that a lot of samples were collected by the apollo engineers or by the sorry apollo um, during the apollo missions by the astronauts or the the man the crewless missions were also there and a lot of samples were collected so a lot of different type of moon rocks were were collected this this image is coming from that uh, movie this is not the real structure of or the, the surface of moon but the moon rocks were collected and the moon rocks they uh, so the the various scientific communities and various uh, universities and communities are, are researching the those rocks since many many years now and those uh, those rocks have uh, you can say literally unraveled the mysteries of how the the world was created uh, as such and we can we know the the based on the so just just for for your knowledge uh, like the that the age of earth is also you can say confirmed or has been calculated based on one of the meteor which came uh, many uh, you can say and it was researched and the carbon dating was done on that meteor and then it was found that okay it is also uh, 4.5 around 4.5 billion years old so that's also where approximately that's the age of the earth as well which which, which was uh, understood so chemical composition of various planets chemical composition of if 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 humans go to another planet uh, then whether that planet will sustain the humans or not it's just not about the atmosphere it's also about the chemical composition of that that planet so there are a lot of recent studies which are going on and i'm, I'm i keep uh, sort of uh, myself engaged in those studies as well where we where they, they understand that uh, if if the if so you, earth is really unique earth is having you can say the chemical composition is unique and that chemical composition it supports uh, the the water cycles and it supports the 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 life on earth which is something so unique that it will be there but hopefully uh, it will be in less number of planets uh, as such of it will be in, in less number of planets uh, so those so if humans have to travel somewhere else then how will that planet sustain us or not or is it a, is it practical to be to be there or not or should we how do we save our own earth and not not think of uh, going away somewhere so all those things they they can be studied by the the rocks now the problem is uh, the so for example the uh, whenever they gather the rocks like uh, we have successfully returned 383 kilograms of rock samples and so and so forth. This this statement I think I took from Apollo's missions page. So basically, if you the if you collect a lot of samples, then your weight the weight of the shuttle will be beyond one point, and it will not be able to uh, return back to Earth. That the thruster or the the rocket will will lose thrust maybe two minutes early if you don't calculate it properly, like what it has happened before. So those type of things will can can happen and will happen. So the uh, so basically uh, this is uh, you can say how the 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 uh, how are we starting with this like we will be calculating the the various uh, things over there sample returns. So I'll just take you to the the second file which I have. So what so what we know is that we do not have the full understanding of of Artemis but we do understand the about the previous missions which have already happened uh, as such so we know that the previous missions apollo missions which what type of rockets were they carrying what type of uh, uh, what type of what were the three phases how what was the thrust of that rocket we know and, and exactly how much rock they collected and we know the ratio of how many people who were there on the space shuttle because of that ratio, we can also estimate the ratio of Artemis that OK, if Artemis goes and, and gets the, the rocks for us for, for this for this particular scientific uh, understanding, then how much can it gather? Like what's the uh, in kilograms? How much rock can it possibly gather from from moon? What's practical? How much can we get it back? Because we also have to think about the 
the the the various phases of the rockets uh, or the how much fuel do they have to come back to earth and then uh, and then also when you talk about rocks there can be of many types so which one do we want uh, like the research is going on some of them samples were consumed uh, some rocks were consumed more some rock samples were consumed less so which one should we uh, which one the nasa might be uh, which of the rock sample nasa might be targeting to fetch during this mission so that's what we are thinking first as part of the artemis sample uh, capacity and we have the effect uh, this, this is a sheet which i was showing you earlier over here where there are details about the the uh, the various phases and the, the 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 timeline of of artemis and then what type of scientific instruments will be there artemis 1 artemis 2 and 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 so on and so forth all these details are there uh, over there on this sheet so we basically go through that sheet and we uh, over here and uh, everything is is in is in progress for the moon to mars program how can we go there so i'll take you back to my vs code and we'll see a couple of things here so they we have this uh, rock sample.csv this rock sample.csv is gathered from uh, from their sorry uh, from the from nasa's website and i will just show you from which website this data has been gathered i have kept it open somewhere over here this is the one so this is the the website where lunar sample and photo catalog is there uh, the all the missions are on the left hand side here and the the images the various type of rocks which were gathered are here basalt basalt is there brachia and uh, crystal uh, so rock samples so this is the the dark rock uh, basalt is the dark rock which basically is having volcanic uh, uh, origins but it is the the heavier one the rock the dark one and there is one more called as highland I have talked about them before in another session uh, where we were discussing more about them, so I can just show you the Highland as well. So Highland is the is this this rock sample over here, which is uh, in this uh, image over here. This is Highland. This is light in color. This is lighter. So when the volcanic uh, activity happened on moon, the this uh, this rock came to the surface and it's it it's on the surface. It found on the surface more like this. So there are various type of rock samples. And they have their own, uh, you can say uh, chemical compositions and they have their own uh, history behind them, uh, like which one is generated where, what type of rock is brachia and, and what of what type of uh, rock do we find in the crest and so on and so forth. So the data set has been gathered from from these these websites and I can just show you that if you click on something like this search images and maybe if you click on one of them, you will be able to uh, find a lot of sections and subsections over there. Now I will think where from where that data set was there, but from one of these uh, you can say uh, locations you can find the data sets. So download the the images and what type of section was there, thin section, Apollo 11, uh, some sample 10040 and, and so on and so forth. OK, so this is the website from where the the rock the previous rock sample data is coming so we we have a look at that so there were uh, six of these missions uh, sorry uh, there were six of the uh, we have the the rock samples data is having uh, the mission date uh, over here and then what type of rock was gathered in that mission uh, basalt soil was gathered or core was there and so on and so forth. and what was the weight uh, in grams that was gathered of that rock sample so we we start from here and we basically want to understand the ratio of the you can say how much the payload versus the ratio of uh, or the payload and we talk about payload payload is the entire payload but in inside the entire payload also what is the capacity of how much sample can we gather in the next artemis mission so we basically uh, convert the the, the the kgs into grams over there so you can see that various missions are here and then uh, we have just done a head so it's just showing five of the outputs but you you will see that the in kgs uh, the data is available is now available 5.6 kg and dot two and so and so forth 
So these are the various missions where the rocks were gathered. There were six missions when the rocks were gathered 11, 12, 14 and Apollo 15 and 16 as such. So now it uh, and this is just to visualize it better. This is the, the amount of the total rocks which were gathered or the weight of the, the samples which were gathered by the each and individual missions 21 kg, 34 kg, 41 kg, 75 and so on and so forth over there. The overall calculation of that. Now, uh, what we do is we basically find the difference in the date uh, in the weights, like in the in the missions, uh, like were we able to? You can say uh, how what was the difference in the weight, like versus the previous one? So how much extra samples were collected in in Apollo 15 versus in Apollo 14? We have that difference uh, over here, and there is nothing in in and uh, Apollo 11 was the first mission. So basically, the difference uh, there was no mission before it. So we have not we'll replace that value as with zero because there was no mission before it. So whatever it gathered is the is the bottom line over there. So we find that whether the the ongoing missions they they gathered more or less rock samples. OK, so finally uh, we have the we clean the data. We basically put zeros wherever required and uh, you will notice that the samples are and the, the, the sample in kg sample between kg and the weight difference of each mission to the from to the next mission. So this is Saturn V rocket, so we don't have the full details of the next Artemis uh, rocket because how much thrust will be there? What what details what what details will be there as part of the rocket design? It's not available. So as as the time progress and uh, by 2025, I think that information will be available 2024 2025. But today that information is not available to the full extent to the full extent. So we have the old information from the Saturn five rockets. The second set of Saturn rockets were the ones where which took uh, the Apollo missions to the to the uh, space. So uh, these are pretty well documented, so we will be able to draw comparisons between them. So if I take you back to this website, I will be able to show you how I found that. So you see this. This is one of the NASA's uh, website where you can put the name of the uh, I can just I think I can. I can just put it over there. And I think it should. I, I that's how I, I have kept this page open over here, but I yeah like this. So you can put the the spacecraft or the mission name. Those are the keywords. You can also search for other things, experiments, spacecraft, and so on and so forth. So Saturn, uh, Saturn uh, five, this one. So these were the Apollo one rockets over here, <coughs> the Saturn series. So if you click on this, you will be able to find more details about that. You will be able to find the exact uh, the the weight of that mass of that. Uh, they have given uh, you can say it's in kgs over here, so that's that's literally uh, outside Earth. Uh, the the weight is not how we feel it on Earth, right? Because of gravity, so uh, that's why mass is used. So basically, uh, there were more than eleven thousand measurements taken, and so on and so forth. So the uh, so this is the the location from where the the data for the for the Saturn's uh, weight and everything is gathered. So this is Saturn five uh, rocket. Now this is a three stage rocket which we were talking about. So there are three parts which burns of the first one. I'll, I'll correct myself. The first uh, thrust of the, the first uh, phase of the rocket. It takes to 68 kilometers into the sky and the next one takes takes the shuttle to the orbit and the next one basically takes you to the moon. So there are two things in the in the rockets. We have the command modules which are looking like that. So the the this is where the 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 astronauts are are present. So if if there are two astronauts who uh, go down to the surface of the moon, then the third astronaut will be in the command module over here. And then this is the one of the lunar lander, which uh, I just googled for this image uh, over there. Uh, I'm not sure from which which exact. Uh, which exact mission this image is from, but I think it's one of the Apollo ones only. Uh, 11, I think. So lunar modules are there, which basically detach and they they land on the moon and they are the support. They are supposed to go to the moon uh, and the astronauts will collect the samples and they will come back uh, and this will uh, go back to the orbit orbit to the command module. Now the 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 weight of these are very well documented. We know exactly what's the weight of the lunar lander. What's the exact weight of the 
of the command module over here. So those information are, are very well documented from the older uh, Saturn mission. So we have gathered that data and the command modules, uh, uh, which what exact name of the command module was there? What model was there? Casper, Endeavour, uh, Kitty Hawk uh, and, and so on and so forth, Yankee Clipper. So these are more details you can look up over internet for them to learn more about them and exactly how what was their uh, you can say uh, the mass of these command modules in kilograms is calculated here what was the difference between the previous one and what is the weight of the lunar lander over there so the this data has been the the data frame which we had we have enriched that with this new information which we have gathered further from their websites and then the this is for the uh, where we have the the uh, you can say where the further total has been done of it and little more cleaning of data na has been replaced by the some zeros over there and and so on and so forth these negative numbers are the mass difference so that's why we have these negative numbers we don't have to take care of them uh, over there okay now so we know the 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 saturn's payload we know the the that is the old older rocket which is documented the we know the the how much uh, rocks it it gathered and we know the module weight also. So the Saturn's Saturn can the payload was 43500 kg, 43,500 kg. So this much of the uh, this this much of of you can say weight it it can carry to the to from outside from from Earth when it it basically launches. Uh, that's the thrust which which it which it can, or that's the uh, the entire payload which it can carry. Uh, and then the three phases rockets were there and but remember that when it comes back it doesn't have those three phase rockets over there right uh, basically the command module is the only thing left by the end of it so you will notice that we have gathered uh, uh, added all those details like the the crews now the uh, weight of the crews are also uh, understood like how much sample rocks it it got uh, what was the lunar module uh, weight command modules weight uh, over here type of command module and the weight the total weight of both of them and the the crew area as well so the weight of the crew including in, in and their food uh, plus the water plus any waste material which they generate or any other thing oxygen and the any uh, overall the the weight of of everything was was is gathered and then we are basically trying to find the the ratios over there like crew to the payload ratio uh, was the ratio between that crew area to the payload area to the payload the sample to the to the crew area and the sample to the payload what are the ratios which are there so what's the overall payload versus how much sample are we gathering so you can see uh, the overall payload can be big number uh, in these during the starting so but the sample is very gathered very less so you see a very small ratio number over here but we have this information from the previous saturn mission now what we do is we basically uh, we don't we yet don't have the full information of Artemis uh, mission and Artemis mission. Uh, so but we understand how it happened and we know uh, some of the. Uh, the 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 mo command modules and the lunar module weights of Orion. So we and we understand the space launch system which Artemis is going to use. So we are trying to, we can draw conclusions or we can draw some sort of parallels or we can at least do some hypothesis uh, with this data where we can we can we can just uh, we can say hypothetically we can uh, find some ratios and our number will be off will be having an uh, offset from uh, from the real value which will be there so some plus minus will be there but definitely we can it's pretty interesting to do all this so these are various missions as such total weight and the payload which they will be uh, carrying and then finally we understand uh, then we using the ratios which we have previously uh, uh, found from the Saturn's uh, the, from the old Apollo missions, we are able to understand that the the Artemis one can estimate uh, sample weight. It can carry 57 kg back to Earth. The next one can carry 65 kg back to Earth and 69 kg point 69.244806 kg can be understood by can be carried by by Artemis two. These are the, the we have just applied the ratios which we have earlier. To the ratios now, uh, or to and, and in the similar ratios, if and we are assuming that the the ratios may remain same or will be similar. So based on that, this is the R estimate of what Artemis can get back. The next problem is, 
it's not very big 57 kg 65 kg 69 kg as such so the numbers are not huge so we have to prioritize which type of rock do we can we get back from the from the moon uh, this is very important so there are the priorities are, are in two different uh, are, are so we have to uh, keep two things in mind first is that the samples which we already have on earth and we have enough amount of that that we don't want we want the samples which are depleted because of research because whenever you do do any research that some some portion of that sample is depleted as such right so the total amount of the sample which is left on earth it it shrinks in size so we want the samples the 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 rocks which we don't have or we do, with the samples are depleted we want them to be in more ratio versus the ones which uh, we have ample amount of right or the important ones we, we want to get because everything is limited over there so we we do that analysis we have the uh, the previous uh, samples and uh, over there we know basalt is the the dark rock which is heavier in weight uh, Brecky, I think if I'm correct, this is the rock which is created when various other rocks they they smash together. This is the the rock uh, Breccia, which uh, is the is created because of those smashed rocks. I uh, I may have uh, mixed two of them, but I think that's the one. So uh, right, so this is how basalt looks like. This is the one of the image from the sample. And there is one more problem. If you when the when the the astronauts will be there on the on the surface of moon, it, they will be there for a limited time, right? The life support system is there. Oxygen will be running out, so they have limited time and they have limited area to navigate as well. We can also uh, the the unmanned uh, rovers can also gather the rocks, uh, but we also have to run some sort of AI solution which can identify the the rocks which we want to pick up uh, from the or that we would like to be collected from the from the surface of the moon versus other samples which may not be that that relevant. So basalt and this is the uh, brachia over here, the other rock example, and I will just scroll up. So there are so we have noticed on the data uh, which we have on prim, uh, sorry, uh, on Earth, uh, that basically basalt and brachia, they uh, these type of rocks are with low samples uh, than those of core and soil. So we have less of basalt left and we have less of brachia left versus the the core and the soil. So from the next mission, uh, Additionally, because the likelihood is high that every mission have the same core and soil sample, so we can focus more on the basalt and the, the brachial rocks uh, type for the sample that we have collected. So this is what we are trying to understand from the data we have. Uh, you can say uh, the weight of this is uh, reducing remaining sample weights over there. So you will see that basalts is dot one one dot four zero. These are various missions uh, and various you can say uh, which what was the idea of that particular sample. Uh, and remaining uh, sample size over there. Brachia is also 0 0.07 kg left from the Apollo 7 with the ID of that sample 10021. That's the ID in the in the website which I showed you. So these are the samples which are left uh, less with us on prim uh, on Earth. Uh, and basically. So uh, basically we would like these to be uh, gathered more. And there is one third type of rock called as crystal. Uh, and this basically, I found this image after a lot, a lot digging up on internet for a long time. Uh, this this type of rock is not gathered a lot even in the in, in during the previous Apollo mission, uh, and it's uh, it's part of the category called as crystal uh, over there. And uh, this is also something one of the unique samples which we don't have much of on Earth. So on the next mission, this can also be targeted to be collected more. So this is the three things which we are planning of that. OK, Artemis can gather maybe basalt uh, and it can gather more of crystal and brachia. These three mission uh, three rock types over there. OK, now the third part. So basically, uh, if I just uh, take you to uh, the second last part, not the last one, but if I just show you this one over here, uh, 
the one of the way by which we have understood a lot about our earth and universe and solar system as well uh, is by uh, you can say uh, you can say monitoring and studying about the various meteors which are there and any meteor uh, showers which happen and we study the meteorites which are there uh, and we study the chemical compositions of that and uh, so a lot of lot of this these uh, you can say meteoroids. So there are three different there are three definitions which we'll just go through. So meteoroid uh, is basically uh, when it enters the Earth atmosphere, we see those lights in the sky. That's at that point we call them meteor. And uh, when they pass through the atmosphere and they hit Earth, it becomes a meteoroid. So the estimate from NASA is that every day, even today, 48.5 ton of uh, meteoric material will fall onto Earth even today, right? 48.5 ton of that, ton uh, as such. So, but most of it will be completely burned in the atmosphere. But whatever will be left will be will be available for you to uh, study. And most of it, it's it's uh, you can say well preserved in the Antarctic ice sheets over there. Now the so. Uh, uh, one of the thing which which is noticed is that various comets uh, when they pass through when they come near uh, any star like our star. So when they come near sun, the ice basically melts off and the the pieces break off and they. They do a short sort of uh, a meteor shower uh, and when he, a very uh, we can say popular incidents or very well studied historical incidents are there where these comets were understood or we we found that these comets uh, when they pass through the earth at that time we we see those lights in the sky because the ancient in like 300 years back 400 years back to them it was just lights in the sky right so they they noted down in it, it in cave paintings and they noted down in in the in the books and in in the leaflets and so on and so forth okay so uh, there is one thing very interesting which we are doing in this uh, which you will do in the learning module is so the moon is basically having various phases and moon phases are nothing uh, else they are, they are simply how much light is is shining on the moon over there uh, when the light is shining on the full moon full moon and then if it is like that it's third quarter crescent new moon and so and so it's just about the lighting over there so uh, that we have that data we uh, we have the data of the moon phases as well in the learning module for you to go through uh, and we have the historical data of the meteor showers which have ha happened and the constellations which are there uh, and the cities, uh, cities or CSV as well. So I will be able to take you back to the to the NASA's web, so to the websites over here. And this is the website from where that data has been gathered. And if I click on the gallery, you will find that the uh, or not. I think it was in depth. So we and they have like black beauty is one of some famous uh, Mars met, uh, meteorite which which we have able we are able to study. So one of the, the so meteor showers happens whenever those. Uh, so see meteor showers are usually named after the star or constellation that is close to when the meteors appears in the sky and uh, one of the most uh, few of the meteor these uh, these uh, you can say the meteor shower is very uh, famous uh, and it happens on August 12 every year. So you can be in some specific location to go and. View the meteor shower as such. So these are the other major. Meteor sh streams which happened and it's and you can find this. Uh, so this is data from 2019. So on January 2nd and 3rd you could have seen that. Uh, and there are 110 rate per hour. It's basically, I think, the uh, the estimated rate per hour in perfect conditions based on the activity. How many will uh, the the lighting uh, the it will be visible uh, to the naked eyes as well. So these are the other ones which you can watch. So for example, if you are visiting any city which falls on the correct latitude and longitude, right? Uh, you can and you are on one of these dates. So we can also find the the estimate of can you see the uh, that particular 
meteor shower or not. So that is the, the, the part which we have here and we have the city data, Abu Dhabi uh, and Amsterdam, uh, sorry, uh, Adamstown and, and uh, other regions will be there uh, from various countries as such where and the latitudes are there. So uh, in this second example, we I'll just basically show you this one. So these are the lines of the latitudes over here. So we are trying to find the uh, the estimate of the likelihood of seeing the the meteor shower if we go to the city and on which day can we expect which one right like that and these are the various constellations uh, uh, and in that direction we have to look look for like we have to look in some particular direction and in that direction you will be able to see the meteor shower and and so and so forth like that so i'll just show you the the uh, i'm running out of time so i'll just show you the the major part over here so in up uh, so the the output of this particular second learning path over there was that in abu dhabi you can see the following meteor showers so lyrid is best seen if you look towards the lyrac constellation on april 22 2020 so if you were, would have been there on that day you could have seen it as such now uh, the other ones we could have seen on april 2020 as well on october 16th we could have seen the orionids and the Perseids, uh, Perseids or Perseids over there. Uh, Perseus constellation on July 20th on 2020. So all these are the estimates based on the machine learning which we have done. Now, the another interesting part which I want to show you is how uh, how can we basically so if the Artemis lander goes to the space, then how is that Artemis lander going to identify the the rocks uh, or the how the how can we pre identify the rocks and just inform that okay it's lying on that latitude and longitude and go and pick it up right so uh, the ai systems which are there in uh, microsoft azure we have cognitive services and these cognitive services are pre built ai solutions and these are ready made we do not have to i think i just have to refresh my page uh, over here for it to start but let me see if I can make it start now. OK, so if you see it is simply converting my speech into text. So this is good for any uh, assistant which you have at home. You can use the every we convert the speech into text and that text is basically how you turn on your lights and you change. You increase the cooling or reduce the cooling on and any other assistant which you have at home will be Siri, Alexa or, or any uh, Cortana will be able to understand this. Uh, so if you are making something like that, you need speech to text. So what you are what I'm trying to show you right now is that we have these ready made solutions uh, in Azure uh, part of cognitive services where you can create your AI solutions like this cognitive and there are around 28 type of them. So one of them, the one which I was showing you was part of this speech speech to text and there are so many more you can simply uh, look up in their documentation for them and the one which I'm showing you here is called as custom vision. So as part of the vision family, see uh, there are two things. Sometimes we do not require that the, the end customer doesn't need to give any data to train the system. In pre-built solution, I'm, I'm not, not talking about custom AI. Custom AI, if you think of custom AI, you, you are the you are in control, you give your data, you train it the way you want it, right? But in pre-built solutions which are ready made like speech to text, you don't uh, need to train it for your own particular accent or speech because they have done it for you. They have trained the, the model enough uh, on all the accents and all the possible data samples and so on and so forth. So we have pre-built AI solutions which are ready to use, plug and play. Uh, any developer can use it. And there are some solutions like custom custom vision where I can give my own data. So it will provide me with with this nice looking interface over here, easy to work interface and I can give my data and I can train my own custom AI solutions, but uh, with transfer learning with less efforts over here. So if I click on this one, so this this custom vision uh, to use it, you if you come back to Azure, you basically need to have one uh, resource group and this is the over the moon. Uh, that's the one. Uh, one which I have created there in South Central US. Uh, this is the cognitive service for custom vision. And if you want to work uh, with uh, 
with custom AI, you can go for you can watch any other previous session. Uh, we I think this is from the session which we did last week as well. Now I'll just come back here so I can create these projects. We can do classification object detection. We can have multi tags per image, single tag per image. Uh, and I'm not sure if you know it or not, uh, but I always sort of do tell people about it that we have Azure space already uh, and these as part of Azure space. We have the offerings which are for the space industry. So just FYI, there is right now one custom AI solution which is deployed in the International Space Station and that solution is uh, detecting the damages which will happen to the gloves or the suits of uh, the space suits which these uh, which the astronauts they wear it it finds the the damages which are happening to it in real time without any manual uh, you can say it's doing it in real time uh, and it is deployed in this HPE supercomputer in the International Space Station right now in this uh, box over here uh, over there and it's uh, and it's right now uh, active. I'm not sure if it is right now active, but it was active uh, uh, in 20, uh, I think 2021 uh, fall of 2021 uh, like that. And the it was used to find the the uh, some if any damage happens because to the naked eye it doesn't uh, we experts can still find it, but it will be difficult for me to show you where that damage has happened because this astronaut was doing that spacewalk and, and was uh, repairing all these sharp edges over here and there were so many sharp edges in this in these modules and it may have damaged the the rubber layer on or the next layer over there behind which the life support system is there so the for example so if i take you back here so we can create these single tag per image, multiple tag per image solutions. We can have it general. Uh, the one which I'm making right now is, ge is generic, is general like that. We can do logo uh, product on the shelf. Uh, very, it's pretty self evident, right? Product on the shelf. Uh, retail oriented, food oriented solution. The compact ones can be exported to your IoT devices. The, the ones which do not have compact written are big, having bigger footprint and they are cloud oriented so they will be hosted in the cloud but the compact ones can be exported so you can run it locally in your iot device on premises so we have made the object detection one there uh, this one that's the one which i have made and i have uploaded a data which i was showing you earlier uh, that same data i have, I have pushed here uh, i have picked so for you to do some uh, you can say proper ai model training you should have at least 30 images of uh, of that particular type and uh, that's the recommendation uh, it doesn't always want 30 but that's the recommendation from microsoft that you should have 30 images uh, to be able to train it properly so we we have uploaded two tags we have 36 uh, images of basalt and highland 35 over there so i think i physically i may uh, i think uh, i'll just show you how uh, I have. Uh, how can we do this? So we upload the image from here uh, like that. So let me find the image location. And the image is right now. Uh, you can manually upload it. You can loop it as well and then push it anywhere around. You can do it, but you can select the images and it looks like this, right? This is how it it uploads and will be there. Now if I click on any existing image, uh, then the tagging process needs to happen. Now it, this can be, uh, you can have it, uh, you can say right now I have done it uh, because this this image was not very clean. It was having the scale also here. It was having those, uh, uh, I think orientation oriented, uh, some thing, uh, things are kept over there and see the, the box is also there at the back end. Uh, and the uh, in some of them it's not it's very dark the images are very dark in some of the image they have for the orientation purpose they have this uh, southeast and and there are different images the scale is also there so this needs to be uh, will be picked up so to properly uh, select the data i have tagged it like this you can tag it you can select like this and you can tag it like that so this needs to be done and you need minimum 30 to get started. Uh, 
30 uh, as such and it does a very good job. So so if you are doing a sort of data labeling, you can label some of the data yourself and then you can do your data labeling with your machine learning. And once your data labeling has been done, you can simply take that labeled data for the next purpose, right? But you that needs to be done. If you don't have labeled data, you need to take care of it. There is no easy way around uh, from that. OK, now basically once you do that, you have to train it. Now this system is more it's a very SaaS so solution type of solution. It's very straightforward, very easy to work with. Uh, it's more developer oriented where anyone can use it. Uh, anyone with with no AI knowledge can also use it, uh, but they, they needs to be they need, need, need to be pretty enthusiastic about what they are doing. For instance, quick training is there. Advanced training is there. It takes more time, but this will will take till 96 hours to train, but it will be way, way more better than what we have right now. So I have not done that. I simply have done the quick, quick training uh, and I just did it in the morning uh, at 7.42. So you will see that this this ran for the training happened for I think five five minutes over there on 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 on, on the data which I had. These are the scores and if I I can do the testing, I can deploy it from here. Uh, I can say publish. I'll show the testing first. So I'll just click on this quick test. I can do the testing with the uh, with the with providing an image here or I can upload it from my from my laptop. So I have created this folder where I have few test images. Now uh, I think this one is a basalt rock. Uh, so uh, let's see. I am. Yeah, 94% and like that I sort of know that it's a basalt rock. And this I know is one of the highland rock because it is light in weight and that's I have seen similar images before. So these are not really the images on which we have done the training, uh, but we uh, but it's doing a good job. Uh, not always we can try a few more samples. Maybe let's see this is also basalt, but we have that background black thing as well over there, but it found the correct uh, object and tag labeled it so nice uh, solution you can change the, the the thresholds over here you can click on this option called as publish you can publish it it will publish uh, in the cloud as one endpoint and these are the api endpoints you can do api calls to it this is your url that's your prediction key uh, and you can use the image you can send it through your through your camera or whatever you have through that through the iot device which can do that and or you can use any uh, other location as well so uh, these are the the uh, if you have an image file use the bottom one if you have an image URL then use the top one over there export for this will not be there. I can export if I create the compact projects I can export as a tensorflow project or as a ONX model or I can export the Docker image uh, and the model inside it and I can run it in the IoT. Uh, edge devices for that we have to go for these options the compact ones. So what type of uh, export do you want? TensorFlow, uh, Core ML, ONX, o Open Neural Network Exchange, or Vision. You, if you want to run it on Microsoft Vision AI Dev Kit, you can you can select that uh, as well uh, over here. And if you have that type of project trained, uh, which we can do this for this data as well, but then you will be able to uh, click on this export and it will export that file to you and go and you run it anywhere you want like that. So this is what I had for the session and I will just take you back. So this is what we planned like what type of how machine learning or how Python or how AI can be used for any type of of or to understand the, the complexities of the 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 mission moon travel or the the moon to Mars mission or the moon mission. The next one the Artemis mission and what type of samples can they carry? Uh, the meteor shard and this is friendly to the to the to younglings as well. You can simply ask your get your kids and make them interested into machine learning just by following the the animated movie and that any everything in this learn module is is mapped with the animated movie. So the meteor shard which we talked about that uh, to reduce the seriousness of that in the animated movie this happened. The meteor was basically a frog which was uh, so the the meteor shower was like the was the flying frog. So uh, like this, the parallels are drawn in this learning module between the uh, the uh, uh, the for for any anybody who's who's young to understand 
uh, what we might be doing to get them uh, interested into the the world of AI and ML, right? So this is a learn module link. You can it's available on the on the learning page here. Uh, we will put this in the chat window again. You can I'll I'll take your questions. I'll just read. I think it's there in the chat. Just it was just pasted few minutes back. It seems so you can go and uh, go through that one over there. And uh, I'll take your questions. If you have any questions, you can unmute and ask the questions as well. And uh, this is what I had planned for your uh, for today. OK, so uh, do put your questions in the chat window and. Uh, let us know about your questions. While we are waiting for the questions, I've already you know, shared the survey link. Uh, you can take the event ID and please, please do share your feedback about today's session. Uh, it will help us to choose our topics better in the future. And please feel free to use the learn module link, uh, which is shared in the chat section and also displayed right now. Uh, this will give you access to additional resources to take your learning further. You can always reach out to Shivam. His social handles are already there on the meetup page. So in case if you have questions later, please feel free to reach out and ask him. And yes, of course, join our uh, Bangalore meetup page and the LinkedIn group for more session. And today we have another session by Jigger at around four o'clock in the evening. So please feel free to join the session. If we don't have any more questions, uh, then we would like to wrap up for today. Thank you, Shivam, so much for the session and thank you all for joining us today. And enjoy the rest of your day and see you at four o'clock today for the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Rashmita. Have a nice day. Thank you.